Good morning. We'll remember in a particular way this morning at Mass, John Frontera. Please join me in the entrance antiphon, which is on page 828. Contend, O Lord, with my contenders. Fight those who fight me. Take up your buckler and shield. Arise in my defense, Lord, my mighty help. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench, until he establishes justice on the earth, the coastlands will wait for his teaching. Thus says, the God, thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spreads out the earth with its crops, who gives breath to its people and spirit to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by the hand, I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement, and from the dungeon, dungeon those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? When evildoers come at me to devour my flesh, my foes and my enemies themselves stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war be waged upon me, even then will I trust. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, 
whom Jesus had raised from the dead. They gave a dinner for him there, and Martha served, while Lazarus was one of those reclining at table with him. Mary took a liter of costly perfumed oil made from genuine aromatic nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and dried them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Then Judas the Iscariot, one of his disciples, and the one who would betray him said, Why was this oil not sold for 300 days wages and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and held the money bag and used to steal the contributions. So Jesus said, Leave her alone. Let her keep this for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The large crowd of the Jews found out that he was there and came not only because of him, but because to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. And the chief priests plotted to kill Lazarus too because many of the Jews were turning away and believing in Jesus because of him. Rejoice, for this is good news, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Two images for our reflection this morning. One is... Uh, just coming from the time in which we were passing, Holy Week. Uh, yesterday, as our altar area reminds us, Jesus triumphantly entered into Jerusalem to hails of Hosanna and kings. Where Jesus was, exactly what was going on on these early days of Holy Week, we don't know. The Gospels, the Scriptures don't tell us. What I would encourage you to do during your prayer during this week is today just take some quiet time in your own imagination, enlightened by the Holy Spirit, just ask God what was in Jesus' mind and heart on this Monday? What might he been doing, saying, enjoying time? with the apostles. Even if it's only two minutes, just take some quiet time to sit and to be with Jesus. Yesterday, we heard the Lord say to Peter, you couldn't stay awake with me one hour in the midst of his agony. But really, the blessed gift of Holy Week is we can slow down our lives if only for just two minutes just to say the Lord, let me be with you today. Be with Jesus on this Monday of Holy Week. Don't try to anticipate where Jesus was, what he did tomorrow, Tuesday, or as the tensions started to rise within the city of Jerusalem on Wednesday, jumping to Thursday. I would really encourage you, each day of this week, just try to be with the Lord today on this Monday. Ask the Holy Spirit to accompany your imagination so that as you wonder, what was Jesus doing? What was he saying? What was he laughing about with his disciples? That you might have an experience of that. The second um, reflection for the morning is this action that we see in the gospel with regards to Mary Magdalene and how she breaks this jar of very costly uh, perfume, this aromatic nard. She breaks it open. Uh, she doesn't pour it. She breaks it open and um, anoints the feet of Jesus. She does a great kindness for him without reserve or without seeking notice. What do I mean by that? There's a certain, if you can imagine a jar filled with very costly perfume 
and if it's slowly poured onto somebody's feet. If Mary, at the feet of Jesus, just took this jar of costly perfume and poured it out slowly, what would have gotten the attention? This generosity of Mary slowly pouring out the gift, drip by drip, as if almost consciously saying, see what I'm doing for you, drip by drip. But Mary doesn't do that. This alabaster jar, as we are told, it's broken open. It all comes out at once. And what happens with that great generosity? Nothing is held back. Nothing is sought for Mary. She's not looking for any praise. She's not looking for any notice. She just breaks it and it all out, once at a time. The room is filled, we're told, with a beautiful fragrance. Mother Teresa would say something simple, simple, uh, similar to that, that when we do things wholeheartedly for God, it's truly beautiful. This is the mark of, of Mary Magdalene's life, that from the moment she believed in God's love for her, and left all other loves behind, that she lived her life with such generosity towards God that it was beautiful to see, that it was actually something that filled the room with beauty. May the same be said of us as we seek the Lord with a similar generosity. For all God's holy church, that we may be a visible sign to others as we follow the way of the cross in the world today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in areas of the world beset by war, hostility, and conflict, especially in the lands where Jesus walked, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are in prison, that they may find comfort in the Lord and not lose hope, we pray to the Lord. That Jesus' reliance on God through his passion and death may be a model for us in our trials and sufferings, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are abandoned, who feel they have no one to turn to, that they may realize that they can turn to God and that God will never abandon them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray particularly at this Mass for John Frontera. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we ask you to listen to the prayer's voice, but as always to the quiet ones of our hearts. And if they be for your greater honor, our greater good, that you grant them all to Christ the Lord.
that this our sacrifice, yours and mine, might be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. Look graciously, O Lord, upon the sacred mysteries we celebrate here, and may what you have mercifully provided to cancel the judgment we incur bear for us fruit in eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the hosts of angels adore your majesty and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light on us all, we pray, that together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her most faithful spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who are pleased to do your will throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty, Savior's command. 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to each other a silent peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Please join me in the communion antiphon, page 828. Do not hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Turn your ear towards me on the day when I call speedily. Visit your people, O Lord, we pray, and with ever-watchful love, look upon the hearts dedicated to you by means of these sacred mysteries, so that under your protection we may keep safe this remedy of eternal salvation by which your mercy we have received. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Kindly bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May your protection, O Lord, we pray, defend the humble and keep ever safe those who trust.
trust in your mercy, that they may celebrate the Paschal mystery not only with bodily observance, but above all with purity of mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder, during Holy Week we have our ecumenical services throughout our community, and today St. Rose will be hosting the ecumenical prayer service here at noontime, followed by a simple lunch in the hall. So if you have 20, 30 minutes or so at noontime to join our other Christian brothers and sisters for some time of prayer, please do so. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended. Let us go now to live it in peace and in joy. Amen. Have a great day.